Welcome to Conversational Currency, powered by the Speakers Retreat Live. I'm your host, Shadidi Laser. Conversational Currency is the platform that examines the importance of social skills in the digital era, and the Speakers Retreat is your three-day event which features the inner workings of a six-figure public speaking business. You receive custom headshots from a professional photographer. You receive five-minute speeches on stage in front of a wide array of speakers, authors, coaches, and experts. And the speaker's retreat is hosted by Pure Potentials and Jackie McClinigan. Now we have an all-star panel of speakers, thought leaders, and experts assembled who attended the speaker's retreat, which took place in the past week. And we're going to gather some reactions and uh, get a feel of the experience overall, how the panel or how the event overall changed each and every individual, and what's next for our panelists. So first, Starting with Pat and moving on down, ending with Dr. Marion, please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about your passion. Hi, my name's Pat, um, and I'm opening an aquaponic greenhouse and restaurant in Prem, Nevada to empower consumers to take back their health by educating them on the toxic world around them and giving them a vehicle, which is the aquaponic system to unplug from the toxic grid. Susan? Hi, I'm Susan Binney and I have a coaching program that helps women empower, get empowered to take the word can't and change it to can in their vocabulary, knowing that there's nothing they can't do and anything they want to have in life, they can do. A lot of it is getting to the core of what is stopping them, what is blocking them, and moving forward their business, their relationship, their life to where they want to be. Karen. My name is Karen McGill. I'm from Vancouver, Canada, and I help women reorganize their debt so that they can take the pressure off, pursue goals, and have fun again. Olivia. I love helping people courageously embrace change with ease and excitement. And I'm all about joy, the joie de vivre, which means the joy of living. And I truly believe that uh, if, if there was more joy on the planet, there would be no war. And finally, Dr. Marion. Take your, you're currently on mute. I forgot about, I'm on mute. So great day, everyone. I am Dr. Marion Afford. Um, my focus is on mindset, mastery, and money. Making sure that you are able to improve your thoughts alter some patterns, and bring about the results of fulfillment and focus and financial security in your life. Okay, now let's get right into the speaker's retreat. What was your perception of the retreat and how was it changed by attending the, the retreat overall, starting with Dr. Marion and moving down the line? <laughs> you know, um, I didn't have any expectations out of it because, you know, I, I figured it would be more of a classroom environment, uh, small breakouts that would allow us to really gain insight and really chop up and see how we could really grow. And what I found was that it really was about confirming the things that you knew, but just didn't know how to ask and who to ask. So it put us in the room with people that allowed us to understand about influence, that allowed us to understand about packaging that allowed us to understand about managing your message so that you can get to the people that really are waiting to get your message and that are able to actually pay for your message. <laughs> so that was good. So that was my big takeaway. I just really walked away just saying it's time to get busy and yes, to build that team, not holding on to trying to do it by myself. Okay. Excellent. Olivia, what was your, your, in attending the event at first, your initial perception and how 
was that change through attending the event, interacting, so on and so forth? Well, for one thing, I was excited to spend those four days with Jackie because she's a fun, she's a fun wacky dudes, sort of like I am. And on top, in addition to being somebody fun, she's very, very business savvy. Um, she's, she's got a great mind and I knew for sure that I was going to get a lot of value from the event. And then of course, uh, not to mention the connections and reconnections because there were people, there were a lot of people I knew there. So that was, that was great in all kinds of ways. Um, what it did for me is actually, it, it helped me. Can you believe that I was extremely shy and I was taught many years ago that I would become a public speaker. And I said, no way, not me. And so I got, I worked on that. I got out of my shell. I still have my moments. And what this even did is actually help me, it helped me get even more out of my shell. Uh, I took it as a fun experience. And when I got on stage, I thought, well, you know, if I screw up, I screw up. It's just going to be a learning and growing experience. So with that point of view, it was just a lot of fun. And what it did for me is that I, I am now going to stop hiding and I'm really totally embracing uh, my speaking business. Mm. Karen. Well, I actually, I'm a bit of a dreamer. So when I went there, I had the expectation that, you know, all these great things are going to happen. I was going to get working agents wanting to sign me and that didn't happen. And that was okay because I realized that one, I have to take a step back with my business. Um, and two, I realized more importantly, I realized a lot of things about me, like that mm -hmm. I am enough. I don't have to work on, this is not coming out right, but I don't have to work on changing me too much. That, I mean, meeting people like you who are actually interested in what I had to say. And uh, Olivia was a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, and Susan and the doctor and Pat, it was just, I met so many great people. That's the biggest takeaway was the different people and what they taught me about me. Susan. So going into the event, I have come to appreciate that I don't place a lot of expectations other than I knew that we were going to go, we were going to have the opportunity to speak for five minutes on stage. Of course, I was terrified about that. We were going to have the opportunity to have our pictures taken. And we were going to come home with that. Also, going to an event, knowing that Jackie was going to be there and we were going to be able to hear Jay Fassett and Suzanne Evans and Sean Shuchuk, that it was going to be an event packed full of information. And it definitely was packed full of information. I learned an awful lot that I didn't already know. And coming from a family where I truly love to talk, and the rest of my family really didn't always like to listen. It was a great opportunity to be at an event where there was 200 people. We were all in the same boat. There was nerves. There was a lot of apprehension. People wondering, you know, what happens if I say the wrong words or I say the wrong things. And at some point during the event, I realized that I am just like everybody else, and I just need to get up there and speak from my heart, be genuine, authentic, and hope that it all comes out the best possible way. So going up on stage, I thought that being in front of a large group of people in a large room, although I've done it before, um, when it was just me and a couple of other people, I thought that it was going to be very, very difficult and realized that because everyone was coming from sort of that same boat, that it wasn't as difficult as I anticipated. I started out exactly the way I thought I would. Then it organically grew and it ended the way I expected it to. Mm -hmm. So the biggest takeaway for me that I learned was that things don't always come out exactly the way they're supposed to and the way you expect, but they come out the way that they're meant to. And it was a growing experience. I didn't know what to expect as far as the booking agents went. 
And I just know that for me, it's a baseline and I can't wait till next event that Jackie does so that I can improve and then compare the two and say, yes, I have improved and this is where I've come from. So it was, it was fantastic from that regard, for sure. Pat, excellent point, by the way, Susan. Excellent point so far uh, on these uh, particular responses. Pat, please share. Well, um, I wasn't involved in any way until Monday night uh, before the event when Jackie sent out an email uh, giving away six free tickets. And she sent the email at 1.37 in the afternoon and I got it at 8.30 at night and I figured, okay, there's no way that any of these tickets are gonna be left. But I decided right then to uh, stop self-editing and push the button and I got a ticket. So I really had no idea of what was going on other than it was a way for me to find out who I was and some of the things that I needed to do in order to be a public speaker. So I knew there was, was the headshots and the videos and I'm going, okay, okay, yeah, that's great. Um, but this is the first time that I have ever gotten on stage and spoken. And I found that it wasn't as scary as it could have been because it was a supportive atmosphere and everybody else was in the same boat anyway. But what my takeaway was, was before I even got there to stop self editing and just put yourself out there. So, um, I put myself out there to the point that I am going to Sean's event next weekend and I'm pitching my um, business plan to Kevin Harrison, Harrington um, and San Diego. And oh, what the fuck, I'm gonna go for it anyway. Look at you. So Pat. no more self-editing. Yes, aquaponics for the- Love week. it. Yes. And for me, ladies, it, this event was interesting because I am a, a alumni of the speakers retreat. I've attended the event before. And so I came in with an understanding of what the format was. So there was a comfort zone that was there. Now they say, there's a saying that the more things change, the more they stay the same. But what actually ended up happening is that the event was bigger and better. It was literally double the size in terms of venue, in terms of the overall rooms and attendees. So I came in thinking uh, I had a perception and then I stepped into the room and it's like, whoa, wait a minute. This is a whole different ball game. So those same nerves and apprehension that, that comes up whenever you have to speak in front of a crowd or whenever you have to address an audience came to the forefront for me. But it was uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same, and that recognizing warm and familiar faces made the experience feel like home, even though we're in a, a, a bigger and better environment. And that's one of the, the, the key takeaways that comes from maintaining relationships where you grow together. There's people that we started out at many of these events, whether it's Jackie's events, or some of the other speakers, and you see them a few years ago, and now you're doing partnerships and things. It's just beautiful to just grow together. So that's my key takeaway. My question for the panel, starting with Pat, starting with Pat, is who was the most powerful speaker for you and why? Um... Uh, gee. Well, I really appreciated Jackie putting on the event, but I think Sean was the most powerful speaker for me because it opened up another, another opportunity for me to be able to become the person I'm supposed to be. Powerful. Susan Binney. Uh, for me, I would say Suzanne Evans. I have actually wanted to hear Suzanne Evans speak 
for almost a year now. And when I chose to become an entrepreneur, I looked at all of the big speakers out there because I really wanted to be on stage. And Suzanne Evans was someone who I thought was untouchable, if you will, someone who I didn't know that I would actually see on stage unless I went to one of her events. So being excited, uh, Jackie lives in the same province as I do, and I've been to many events with Jackie. And hearing Jackie is always such a pleasure. But hearing Suzanne Evans say that, you know, there's a lot of things that you need to do if you want to be a speaker. And having emotions and getting through your stuff, getting it done on stage isn't the place to do it. And you got to work hard and you got to really want it. So she was a true, true inspiration. And seeing her on stage and realizing how powerful she is and how much she is just a, a human being, just like me, made me realize that I, I can be her someday and be on stages as, you know, as big of a message as she gets across. And hell yeah. Um, I want to be on stage like her. Karen, excellent answer. Excellent answer. Karen, please. It would have been, it, uh, sorry, it would have been Jay. Because I like the way Jay interacted, interacted with the uh, audience. I mean, he was funny and he took a lot of his cues from what the audience was saying and doing. And that's the type of speaker I want to be. More relaxed and funny. Olivia. <laughs> I like them all. Uh, I love Jay for sure. And uh, I, I, how would I say? I am amazed at the, um, the growth that I've seen in Jackie, both in Jackie and in Susan. Um, just like you did last year, I was at Jackie's event and I saw how much her business has grown and it's really an inspiration. And also, I was at the beginning of Susan Evans' uh, uh, business. Uh, several years ago, when she started out, I went to Los Angeles to, to see her. And it, that's also an inspiration to see how much she has grown. And the thing that's really inspiring about Susan, a few days before this event, before the speaker's retreat, I saw Susan um, on her page. She had posted a a video saying she had no makeup, she wasn't dressed up or anything, she was so sweaty, and she was so natural, like she is most, you know, usually. And she was saying that something like, it's amazing that her world, you know, a fat, foul mouth, gay woman has come such a long way. And the thing that I find amazing in her is that she is truly who she is. What you see on stage is who she is. And that's a true inspiration because most of us, and I know that, is, that to be true for myself, I used to be extremely camera shy. You know, I think I've got this and that and I'm just uh, not pretty to look at and I just don't want to be on camera. But then when I see somebody like Susan going, what the heck, get out there and be who you are. I go, yeah, 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 for sure. Mm -hmm. So that would be my message to, to speakers and aspiring speakers. Just be who you are. Heck, just embrace it. Because no matter who you are and no matter what your message is, somebody out there has to hear it. So it's not about you. That's another big takeaway from this event. It's not about you. It's about your message. It's about them receiving your message. Powerful. Great tips. Dr. Marion. Oh, wow. When, you know, when you first said that question and Pat was scuffling with the idea of who was like, the one that most impacted and I went I can't choose but maybe I can give them an order um, the order that I think it came in was that it was Sean literally the way they came in order Sean Suzanne just knocked it out the box with me and then Jay it, it's it's almost as if I know it was, it, that it was really just lined up so perfectly through serendipity, the, the divine presence that just said, hey, they're here for you. This is what you asked for. This is what you need. And, and just like everyone else has said, it's just the way that Sean reminded us and reminded me of something that I had forgotten, which was 
when you're in the space, you got to remember the mind, the mindset, the consciousness, these the subconscious um, memories, the emotions that are going with that are all being displayed. And then Suzanne got on stage and she was all of her, yet she was me. I mean, Broadway and, and you know, not looking like everybody wants you to look, not sounding and talking like everyone. And, and she just opened up the door with such transparency, with such giving, with such presence that I just said, you know what? I got, I got to connect. It, it was a connect and it was an emotional connect. And then lastly, when Jay got in there and really, as Olivia spoke to and as Pat and, and Carolyn, all of them have all said it, um, Karen said it, it's just the way that he was able to move that room and keep me thinking and re-editing, I'm going to borrow that word, re-editing how I, how I thought about money and masterminds and groups of people and it just made it simplistic. So, so those three speakers, I have to be honest. Of course, Jackie did her thing because Jackie orchestrated it. But having her presence to be that, that joyful, carefree embodiment of that glue that, that brought everyone on that stage together was so powerful um, with me. And I could even say there were people that I heard speak over those two days and their five minutes that I was like, whoa, you know, and it was awesome. So with that, in that order, and with that type of specificity, I, I, I say that that's what I got out of those speakers while I was in this retreat this weekend or last weekend it is now. But it was just such a phenomenal exchange between those three energies that just just honed it in and said, I got to tell other folks about this and I got to plan to come back for next time. Mm-hmm. Because it's if this is the level of, of, of insight that we're going to get. If, and, it's, and it wasn't even about yeah, we know we're going to get a program because we're all speakers. We know at the end of our speech is going to be an offer. But it wasn't that. It was that they genuinely poured out, gave takeaways, nuggets, drips, sprinkles, whatever you want to call it. They just were falling out of their mouths effortlessly and without a care because they knew that it was going to impact the lives of people who were just as talented, just as happy, just as driven as they were on that stage. And so that was way beyond, that was the one thing I guess I should recant. That was one thing that I didn't expect, that level of, of transparency and just give all. It was beautiful. It was, it was therapeutic for me. <laughs> very, very powerful testimonials. And let's see, for, first of all, in terms of the, it's very difficult to speak on a Sunday when everyone, the nonstop nature of the event. So I felt that Jay's ability to kind of be the the closer and it was remarkable to me. From my personal, and I've seen uh, Jay speak uh, a dozen times. It was at another event where I, I, I just realized like, wow, Jay is actually a really good technical speaker. Not just the content itself, but technical. He's actually an excellent speaker. It's because I, I talked to the guy personally, and, and we have many exchanges. I, I kind of sit back, and it's one of those things where you can never hear the right answer too many times, or a formula itself is just something you can always. So his message is is always something that uh, I can digest and gain value from. Now, in terms of my personal. Uh, what resonated with me the most in terms of the speakers. I have um, a fork in a row here. I have to make two key distinctions. Number one is in terms of uh, content, content. And that would be Suzanne Evans. So there's there's some some different points within this. Number one, I I define uh, what resonates with me is what makes me take action. And from her presentation, I literally went and upgraded my entire video suite. So now I carry a lavalier mic in my my, uh, blazer pocket everywhere I go because, hey, content can break out at any moment in time. So that was number one. Her, the way she framed video, both um, uh, Suzanne and Jimbo framed the importance of video and it's a topic or a subject within my business that I've gone all in on. This is the year that I've decided to focus solely on video. 
and to sit there with, with in that 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 room and her illustrate that wait a minute there's a lot more that you can be doing there's more quality that you can bring to the table it was just a call to action that i mean right away new soft lights new lavalier you name it you know i have a, a selfie light now just in case i'm in a dark room and need to take pictures at an event and that is what powerful speaking allow that is the 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 effect of it now behind the scenes and because i had the the role of interviewing many of the uh talented speakers that were there got to see the behind the scenes of many of the speakers in the green room so on and so forth and there were two things that suzanne uh did that really like went a long way with me number one is that for uh jordan harrison who is the mc or the host he, she gave uh, this detailed advice on how to manage the event and move the crowd and just so detailed. It's just like a master class in five minutes of just advice after advice after advice after advice. And also she gave me some advice behind the scenes on, okay, this is how the interviews can be used to provide value and, you know, thank you for doing this. And just again, more and more value. And from a content or from a performance standpoint, so um, Suzanne and Jimbo from a content and taking action standpoint, definitely for me. Now, from a performance standpoint is Jackie McClinigan. To be able to speak is one thing. And many people who chose to get on the stage because not everybody made it to the stage. Some people let the nerves take over and it didn't go well. But for her to just lead an entire performance over three entire days of nonstop speaking without cue cards, without all the accompaniments was uh, very impressive to me. And she's becoming more and more polished as she moves forward and just, just a maestro, just, just a conductor of this experience that we all found value from. So I'm just impressed overall at how she was able to manage all of these different aspects as the event went on. Now, please tell me, uh, we're going to start with Dr. Marion, uh, about your speech topic and how it has changed or evolved now that you have delivered it in front of an audience and had it recorded. Um, my topic that particular night was about um, releasing messages right and understanding how they got there and why you have to release the messages that don't benefit you how words will frame your reality and hearing it matter of fact i just watched it this morning um and i was just like whoa you know i said whoa there's a part of you of course i look real slim on the video <laughs> but uh i i love the fact that i could actually feel because this was a new speech for me, something that I created just for that moment. And to feel the audience's response, to, to hear their, their reactions afterwards, and then to watch it, it made sense for me after the fact. So it's definitely being able to share that message about messaging, about uh, how words truly frame your reality. They can either harm you or they can excel you forward. And learning that we can know how to speak to people, how to encourage them for real um, versus using our personal fears, our personal limitations to further impede someone else from going forward, right? Including ourselves, because we're the first self that we are um, impeding when we let words and messagings and memories prevent us from doing and limitations, boxing us in because of our gender, because of our age, because of our because of our ethnicity, because of the community we come from, because of the lot, amount of money that we have. So all of those areas of messaging we get, religious community, don't even get me started, right? And so we have to learn how to reframe those things. And so again, watching that video, reflecting back that night, hearing feedback from people, um, making connections as a result of that, it just really meant a lot to me. Um, you don't really get a chance to do that. And so that was a very unique opportunity where it wasn't like people are there because of it's an event. They were in that room 
and they are your peers. So that made it even different because these are more speakers who are saying this to me, who are giving me encouragement, who are giving me some ideas, who are um, helping me better manage that message. And even the feedback from the, um, what do they call bookers? <laughs> I'm saying bookers, management, talent management, event bookers, whatever term they may need to use. But yeah, I just, I just thought it was just instrumental for me to be able to have that downtime to reflect and get that immediate feedback and know how to go forward, which is not off something often we do. Most of the times we create speeches in, in vacuums. We write them, we create them on the spot, or we write them up, and then we just display them, and we assume that people are, are taking them. But if we're getting paid to do the speech, they're not going to tell us. It sucks. We just don't get the call back <laughs> for a repeat. So, uh, again, it, was just, was a, it just was a, a nuance of an experience. It, it really is, is, has me again, more committed to my A game, uh, building a team, taking the time, um, putting myself in opportunities that allow me to share that message more because it's one that's receptive that people can relate to. You know, we all have had words spoken over us and we just know how, need to know how to reframe them and repurpose them so that we can move forward into our true existence, our exponential existence. Beautiful, beautiful. Olivia. Well, for me, not only was it an experience, but it was also an experiment. Because my topic, yes, and this speech was something that I just came up with for the, for the event. And so it was about the joie de vivre, the joy of living. And before the event, or, you know, before my speech, I was walking through my garden and have a compost pile and I have a rooster on my compost pile, not a live one, a metal one. And the rooster is actually the national bird of France, and I'm French. And this rooster on my compost pile is blue, white, and red, which is the color of the French flag. So as I was walking through my garden, I'm looking at my rooster and I'm going, ooh, now here's an idea. You're coming with me for my talk. <laughs> so of course I had all kinds of ideas of, of, of thoughts like, oh, gosh, this is gonna be really corny. and. I wonder if I can do that and what are people going to think and blah, 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 blah. It went on and on and on. And I thought, you know what? I feel it in my gut that this would be a fun thing to do. Let's experiment with it. So I took my rooster on stage with me. And not only that, but I also had a, a personal um, lapel mic, but it didn't work. And because I'm expressive when I talk, so I was going to hold my rooster, plus I need my other hand to express myself. And I thought, well, I can't hold the, the mic and the rooster and express myself. So what am I going to do? So I get up on stage and I'm going, oh, wow, how am I going to do that? So I got a wild idea. I put the mic between my boobs and I'm holding the rooster and I did my speech like that. So that was a crazy idea. So, of course, again, a flood of thoughts, you know, like, how are they going to take that? And is this going to be ridiculous? And, you know, blah, 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 blah. It turned out it made them relax. It made them just enjoy the moment. It made me totally enjoy the moment. I thought, you know what? This is crazy. Let's just have fun with it. And so they liked my speech. And then at the end of the, my speech, I was high. <laughs> I didn't have to drink. I was high. And driving home that night, I was high. Driving back to even the next morning, I was still high. <laughs> so I thought, wow, I guess this is what I'm meant to do. I don't know that I'm going to have my rooster with me. I called him my business partner. I don't know that I'm going to have my business partner with me <laughs> every time. But my call to action was also come to my garden and uh, for, for a workshop that my rooster and I are doing. You know, So it kind of makes sense. So anyway, the, the, the moral of the story is just, just relax, just have fun, be authentic. Um, I guess that's it. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Olivia. Karen, please share. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Well, my speech was, are you disabling yourself? And I talked about disabling yourself with debt and about how I, you know, I spent a lot of money getting in debt because I was trying to fit in. But what I realized with talking to people like Olivia and listening to Jackie talk about being yourself and talking to George is that my speeches are too serious 
And as you know, Shadid, I am not a really serious person. I like to have, <laughs> I like, I mean, I like to have fun. And so that was my, that's my challenge is how to make debt reorganization bring the fun back into it. So that's what I really, one of the biggest takeaways, like I said, besides being myself and taking a step back is that because everyone thinks with debt, you've got to be, you know, dressed in a suit and you have to be so serious. I don't have to be. They just have to figure out how to do it. Wonderful. Great, great points. Susan Binney. So getting up on stage, I was speaking about can't. <clears throat> and how I took it out of my daughter's vocabulary when she was born with a disability. All of the things that they told her she couldn't do. And it, came, it became about can't. And it was a true life experience of how it came out of hers, but it never came out of my language. And I got stuck in the life of her disability in a job that I wasn't really happy at, but it was what it was. I needed the flexibility. And I have delivered that speech or a version of that speech before, but not in five minutes. And I realized how fast five minutes goes. And I started out with a prop of a deck of cards or a hand of cards, basically saying that, you know, we're all dealt um, a crappy hand of cards or, you know, if we perceive that, definitely it was my hand of cards that I was dealt. It was the worst possible hand that you could get. And I was able to turn that into the best possible hand for me. And if you believe in yourself and do what it is that you want to do and take that word can't out of your vocabulary and do whatever it is that you want to do and you can do, then you can have whatever you want in life. One thing I did try at the very end was something I hadn't done before, which was a call to action of repeat after me. And wasn't really sure how the audience was going to accept that. But I read the audience throughout. And when I did the repeat after me, yes, I can. And everyone repeated, yes, I can. And I was able to end it with, because yes, you can. Knowing that that is going to work, whether they respond to it or not, because I can, you know, repeat after me, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Because yes, you can was very powerful and the I think the biggest thing that I learned in giving that talk in a five minute sequence is that it is possible to give it. However, I need to get to the point quicker. So I needed to turn it around quicker. And I wondered about it myself and the booking agents actually uh, all commented on the fact that it was, you know, there was a great hook, there was a great message, there was a call to action but there was too much of the story about me and my daughter and not uh, turning it quick enough to how I can help other women in the same situation. So that was very powerful. The other thing, because of the quick turnaround, getting the video back, you know, Fish Tank doing that video as quickly as they did, which was fantastic, gave me a really good reflection to look at it and say, what would I have pulled apart of my moment on stage. I wear a pair of pants where I was tempted to put my hand in my pocket, and that's a no-no. And I looked at that video right away and knew that because I had received that comment, yeah, definitely, I'm not gonna do that again. Also, the outfit that I was wearing was a little too casual. It wasn't as structured as it should have been. One, because of the atmosphere being on stage, but two, because of the actual talk I was giving and um, empowering women. And so looking at the, you know, the responses that I got from the booking agents and overall it was a very good uh, rating that I got and I was very proud of the talk that I did. It was great though to have the feedback and to be able to look at that now and go, I'm glad I learned it on that stage and not on a stage I was being paid for. So getting that experience 
and seeing other people, you know, like Livia was saying with her and her rooster, I loved her talk. It was about joy and that joy came out and mine was very serious. And because of the talk, I'm not sure how I could have made mine a little more fun. However, putting my all into it and putting more of me into it without talking about my story, but talking about my personality, having my personality show through, very powerful experience. And although it was such a short period of time, five minutes is actually a very long period of time if you use it properly. And so taught me an awful lot. And I'm glad, like I said, it was on that stage because now I can take that and make it a five minute, a 20 minute, a 40 minute, an hour talk and get to the point midstream or earlier on and know I will never put my hand in my pocket. I won't um, wear the outfit I wore and I can be me. So, yeah. Excellent, excellent point of view. Pat, please share with us. Well, I actually wrote that speech Monday night after I got the ticket from Jackie. But as, and I took it with me throughout uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And as I was listening to everybody and the feedback that they were giving from the stage, the um, booking agents that they were giving from the stage, especially Suzanne and Jimbo, we don't listen after three minutes. It's like, okay, well, so I'm always through the whole weekend, I'm editing my speech as I'm uh, listening to what they're saying and fine-tuning it and um, so I took a lot of my backstory out and put just the points in that got the point across to where I came from where I uh, found out who I was where I'm going and what this is all about and here's um, the pitch which was the entire um, concept of the the speech. So I was able to give my very first speech ever um, in such a way to where the the harshest feedback I got was um, you need to dress the part and you need to wear makeup. And I figured if that was the 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 most intense feedback that I got for the first speech that I did, I must have come off the way that I wanted to come off and people got it. So it was pretty powerful for me because I can take that speech of what I did and, and how I presented myself there and present it to anybody knowing I've already done this. I got through it. It's not going to eat me up the next time. So I, I'm just doing it. Excellent viewpoint. Excellent viewpoint. And my particular case, it was, it was, give you guys some some insight behind the scenes so was delivering the interview so a lot of my time was spent uh, pouring into the various attendees and being in a certain position and always uh, trying my best to facilitate to get the uh, interviews done it's something I really wanted to do and so being an actual participant in the speaker's retreat experience presented a bit of a challenge in that many people practiced or got things ready or whatever the case may be. So I didn't necessarily have the, the, the time to um, work on those things in that context. But what ended up happening was that a theme that's been going on in my life throughout the entire year, which is when you're all in, you just trust the process. And so uh, the, the panel, the art of the interview panel on Friday night gave me a lot of confidence in terms of just feeling comfortable on stage and uh, improvising the moment in the experience. So when it came time to deliver the actual uh, speech, the five minute speech, it was, I actually came up with a new piece of the speech uh, to start it off. So just my speech was on the um, di digital illiteracy and some of the, the dangers and how it can cause uh, generational um, 
just basic generational lack and limitation of that. So what I ended up doing was improv in the first part and it actually worked. It, it worked really well. So as far as what I will include in my presentation for a future reference is more statistics and uh, maybe work on the performance aspect of the presentation uh, a bit more. On my uh, speaker or the, the booking agent evaluation, uh, Suzanne actually wrote that it was the most interesting uh, presentation that she heard all day. She didn't necessarily know what the, the point of it was, but <laughs> the, it was interesting, the, the, the point of it. Um, so there's more, it gave me, uh, from someone who is such a straight shooter, it gave me some, some positive momentum, but also there's little mechanics that I want to improve in terms of statistics and overall performance so that I can hit the bullseye each and every time with that particular speech. Now we're going to wrap up this panel and I want each of you to briefly tell the audience who's watching this broadcast where they can find more information on your work. So repeat your name and where they can find more information about your work starting with Pat. My name is Pat Brunson and you can find me at Aquatic Gardens Greenhouse Dot com and what my passion is. Susan? My name is Susan Binney, and you can find out more information at susanbinney.com or at the International Women's Empowerment Network.com. Karen? Sorry, um, Karen McGill, M-A-G-I-L-L. -L. Go to karenmcgill.com and you can get a free book, ebook on 10 reasons why we overspend. Olivia. I am on LinkedIn and also on Facebook. And my name is Olivia Demos, D-E-M-O-S-S. And I am also uh, on livingthelifeilove.net. And Dr. Marion, where can we find more about your work and your mission? You can locate me at my website at afuaspeaks.com. That's E-F-U-A speaks.com. I'm also on social media as Marion Afua. And we'll get into the conversations about exponential existence. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Shadidi Laser, and you can find more about my work at Mr. Shadid across all social media platforms. That is M R S H A D like David, E E D like David. And please connect with me to discuss more about uh, business, technology, and ways that technology can impact entrepreneurs, youth, and help people knowledge, package their knowledge, skills, and abilities to empower themselves in their communities. On behalf of Olivia, Pat, Susan, Karen, and Dr. Marion, I am Shadidi Laser, and this has been the Conversational Currency Panel brought to you by the Speakers Retreat Live, which is your three-day live event where you learn the inner workings of a six-figure speaking business you receive a headshot, you receive five minutes on stage, and you get to connect with booking agents from all around the world. I thank you so much for your time. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you choose to spend time with us. And for that, we are thankful. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks.